Hey everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to build a fish float that you can use universally as a crab trap buoy, a catfish float, or a fish finder. So stick around, I'm going to show you step by step just how to put it together. Okay guys, welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be taking you step by step on this uh, fish float build. And it's a universal fish float because it, be, it can be used for anything. Uh, you can use it for a crab trap buoy, which is what I originally designed it for. But you'll see why that you can actually use this for a unique catfish jug or turtle jug where it actually um, is an indicator when you have a fish on or a turtle on. And you can also use it to mark your location by just tossing it over the boat. It's completely adjustable in length and it keeps your spot the same depth every time which is really cool. And so uh, let's get started on the build. Let me show you what you need. You're going to need a piece of rebar. Um, this comes in four foot. It's about four dollars at the big box store. You'll need a length of PVC. If you get a ten foot length, we're going to be cutting these in two foot sections. So you'll be able to get five out of a 10 foot length. You'll need a pool noodle from the dollar store. Two end caps for each float that we're going to build. And we need some eye hooks. These are the kind you're going to want that size right there. All right, so let me show you how the build goes. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut your rebar at 12 inches. You're also going to need to cut your three-quarter inch PVC pipe at two feet and cut your pool noodle at one foot. That, these are about four feet long, so you get four at, of one of the pool noodles. You get five out of a ten-foot length of PVC, and you'll get four out of the four-foot rebar you can buy at the big box store. So, if you don't have um, a metal cutting saw like I do for the rebar, you can certainly use a cutoff wheel on a grinder like this or even a hacksaw. It'll just take you a little longer. The PVC, you can cut that with any type of saw. Um, a miter saw works really good, gives it nice clean edges. And what I do is I put a stop block in so I can just put it against and I get my two foot cuts every time. And your pool noodle, easily cut with just a knife. So let me show you how I cut these real quick and then we'll be back to put it together. As you can see, I set up a stop block here to uh, get the right length every time because I'm going to be making several of these. It just saves me time in measuring. So I just slide my piece in, give it a cut. So once I cut the rebar, what I like to do is just chamfer the ends a little bit so it moves back and forth easier. The first thing I do is I take my two foot Three quarter inch PVC pipe, and this is Schedule 40, by the way. Um, and I take and I chamfer the one end just so that the pool noodle slides on more easily and doesn't get ripped up inside. Then the next step is to take my pool noodle and cut them at one foot. 
Okay, these pool noodles are just a little less than four feet. So I'm gonna cut them just a little less than a foot, say 11 and a half inches. And I'll just use a knife to do that. Put them right here, cut right through, simple. Cut one more, 11 and a half. And the final one. This will give me four pieces pretty equal. This doesn't have to be perfect, but I found that this is the right ratio to make them float properly. Okay? So, <clears throat> once I have the pool noodles cut, the PVC cut, and my rebar cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just put the end of the pool noodle on here and just pull it down. Just work. I just put the pool noodle on the end and work it on and I leave about an inch from the end. Now the next phase is really important and that is the glue up. What you want to use, you can use multi-purpose or you can use um, regular PVC cement. But the, the really important thing to do is to use a clear cleaner, okay? Um, the clear cleaner is, uh, what it does is it actually takes the glazing off the pipe and allows the glue to stick. And all you have to do is just put that on like this. Just go around, clean it up. And the same thing for your cap. Don't forget to do the, the fitting as well. Okay, just set them down, do both ends of the pipe, great, open up the glue, and I'm just doing one at a time, it's much more efficient to do them all together, just put a little bit on the cap, thin coat around the end, Slide it on. And I give it a little twist, and that really helps seat it. Then you just push the pool noodle up to that cap if you'd like. Okay? Next step, and don't forget this because it's really important, is take and set the rebar inside. Then get the glue and glue on the bottom. Cap. Press, twist, and wipe off the excess. That's it. Let that set to dry. Now, what you have inside, you can hear that 12 inch piece of rebar sliding back and forth. That's going to be part of the key um, for whether you're using it as a crab trap buoy or as a catfish jug float or for a fish finder marker. The next step is to take our eye bolts and there's the number at the top. I got these from Ace Hardware. You can get them from Lowe's, Home Depot, wherever. Um, that's what they look like. So they're not stainless. I didn't bother getting stainless because they're so cheap. If I need to, I can just screw them out and put them right back in. Now what I do is I pick out a drill bit that is really, if I hold it behind, it actually disappears. And that's about right, because I really want this to seal uh, so no water gets inside these. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I pick a drill bit that just about is the same shaft size without the threads as the eye bolt. But um, what I want to do is I want to actually push that pipe apart as it's going in. So the drill bit I have here is a 564 and that's what we're going to use here. I'm going to actually fasten this through the cap and through the pipe itself. So I'm going to come down just about a quarter inch and drill through both. Then I'm going to start this in. Once you have a uh, 
the eye bolt started, the eye screw, you just use a screwdriver to run it down the rest of the way. And I am going to leave that. I do not want to run it down all the way. I want the last thread just about exposed. And you want to complete it by running it perpendicular to the pipe. And that's it. That's your float. Now, let me show you how they work. To demonstrate how these work, I'm just going to show you using a piece of paracord. And what you do is you put a loop in one end, pull the line through the loop, and then whichever way uh, I'm going to wrap, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to wrap it this way. What I do is I place it with the loop face, facing towards me. Slide it on, and that way this line will cinch up and tighten as I go around. And then all I need to do is wrap on the line. Just above the eye. And when I want to lock it, say I want four feet out, I can just spin it off. Say I have four feet. I take the line as such and I slip it through the eye and around the pipe. And that's it. It's on there. It's locked in place and it's not going anywhere. Now let's go out and I'll show you exactly how they work. Okay guys, I'm going to show you exactly how these floats work after putting the cord on the bottom here like this. The way you make them adjustable is you set out whatever length of line you want. And then I make a loop like this and I just make it a little smaller and push it through the loop like that. Then I take it and I wrap it around two times keeping it above the back here of the cap. And then when I pull it, it really stays in place. No matter how much you move it or dunk it, or it wants to just stay where it is. So let me just show you quick how they work. Now, if you want to use this for jug fishing for catfish or um, even turtles, um, what you do is you move the weight up towards the float and then you can just set it in the water like this it'll stay horizontal and you won't be able to see it from far but when you get some tension on this side and the fish pulls or turtle pulls what happens is the weight falls to the bottom and the float stands up so it acts almost like a flag on an ice fishing tip up so that's a great way of using it for turtles or let's say for even catfish. And you can set the depth again by just adjusting it here at the eyelet. Now, if you want to use it for a crab float, um, you just hold each end like this and let the line spin out. Set the depth where you want it. I usually give myself like an extra two feet or a foot and then just drop it in the water um, that'll keep it in place and then what's nice about it is it sticks up high like this when you come by with your boat you can just grab it pull up the slack on it and then pull the pot up to close the doors uh, again if you're doing using it for a fishing float you just set the depth um, push it through the eyelet wrap it around twice lock it just drop it in the water and you're good to go Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video today and uh, I hope you got a lot out of it. I hope you enjoyed the content and uh, I hope you get to use these floats in the future. Um, you know, I'd like to just share a quick thought um, that I'd leave you with and that is that, you know, we spend so much time in creation 
uh, enjoying it that we forget about the creator who made it and the one who who put that fire and that passion in our heart and our life uh, God himself is the one that created creation our playground um, to reflect what he looks like but you know what you and I have because we have this nature of sin and, and this propensity to sin in our life you know we, we find ourselves far from God and maybe you find yourself far from God for a lot of reasons maybe you had a bad church experience or maybe you grew up with an abusive dad or you felt like you've been dealt a bad hand in some way or maybe you felt like God's let you down but you know what the truth of it is that's not true God really does love you uh, all the beauty you see in creation is the beauty he wants to show you in a relationship with him you know what maybe you're experiencing some things in life that have put you in the brokenness and at your end and you know what God really desires for you to come back home and you know if that's your heart I would really encourage you to just seek God and one of the ways you can do that is I've written a book it's free absolutely free in a world where a lot of things aren't it's free to you um, I don't want to capture email I don't want anything but if you check out the link below um, I'll have a, uh, a, an opportunity for you to click on that and to follow to our website where you can download our book for free it's called growing deep and it shows you how step by step you can redevelop that relationship with God or develop a new one if you've never had one with him before and so I'd really encourage you to do that I don't want anything for it I don't get paid for it and I don't want to get paid for it my goal is just to share with you the joy that I have found in knowing Jesus Christ and so um, if I can help you and your life to be changed because of that that's why I'm doing these videos so guys thanks so much I really encourage you to check out the book um, and subscribe like that would really help us put more content out and for other people to see more and more of these videos so God bless you and remember God loves you more than you know I can't tell you that enough